The Milwaukee FBI office had still failed to access Jenny Aliota's apartment <laughs> after all this time. <laughs> they decided, you know what might work? They're like, how about this? We get him indicted on something really small and stupid, like perjury. And then when we go to arrest him, we make sure we arrest him while he's visiting the apartment. <laughs> so then we can get in the apartment. Then we can get in the apartment. Yeah. So we'll knock on the door with the warrant and we'll arrest him. While the agents are arresting him, we can look around the room and maybe we'll see something. <laughs> And if we see something, we can request a search warrant to come back and search the apartment. Okay. So that's their next plan. I mean, uh, it's not a, it might work, but it's like, that's the best you can come up with, I guess, <laughs> you know? No, it, you know, it's, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good plan, um, but like that's... They're not trying that hard. Like, they're really dragging this out, and um, like we'll see in in the future, like other things that they do, and they go, they do some. It gets shady. It gets really shady what they do. Like at first, they're going to end up renting the apartment across the hall, and just like kind of like looking through the peephole all day. <laughs> like that's relatively minor, but like they're gonna keep stepping it up. <laughs> and, it, and crossing into the territory where um, they're blatantly breaking the law, wow. trying to get into this apartment. Is that is that it for it? Yeah, that's so, it for now. So, like I said, like there's not really a great end because this is going to continue. Like, spoiler, he ends up going to prison for tax problems, but that's not till 1971. Yeah, so we so, got a long ways of this being dragged out. Yeah, which so on- we're just going to check in every so often on on how <laughs> this goes. So the thing that's crazy about this one to me is mm-hmm. is that um I don't know. I guess I I would have tooled up that the the mafia was resourceful and smart about the crimes they were committing. Uh-huh. And it just out, it sounds like I mean his strategy when he initially gets indicted for tax fraud is to just show up to the appointment without his books. I don't think he's even indicted yet. I think, or, I think at this point they're just kind of looking into it. Yeah, like, like I just feel like on the back end the Mafia would have had, like, books created to make this look legitimate. Yeah. But it it seems like they didn't even bother. They just They just flatly ignored the fact that they were supposed to be paying taxes and just did not care. That's definitely the way it seems, yeah. Which, I mean, and maybe that, that's just this time. That's mm-hmm. all they had to do because maybe – because it's still what – without even really having any books, it still takes them like 20 years to convict the guy or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, it is it stupid to not even make an attempt to cover your track? Yeah. Incredibly. But I, I'm going to give Frank credit here because what Frank is really good at is having attorneys. He's, he's, <laughs> he's really good at always having attorneys. And that can get you a long way. If you got a good attorney, that can get you a long way. Right, but and, if you have you have a good attorney and a dirty accountant working together yeah. to hide all this stuff, it's going to get you twice as far. Probably, yes. You know Probably what I mean? Yes. And I'm just shocked that he didn't... He never went that route. Or at least at this point, it doesn't seem like he's even bothering with that. You know... And it also swings back to like the previous, I think it was the last episode we mm-hmm. recorded where we were talking about all these manufacturing companies that yeah. were bringing up and making these counterfeit toys. Well, they kind of tried to cover themselves, but it was really like a, a half, half effort yeah. to really hide the fact what they were doing. They were, they were doing the minimum to be able to to yeah. counterfeit a toy which they could have gone a few more steps and made it a lot harder to realize True. what they were doing. True. And yeah. And um and I should I should clarify uh for this episode um like this is coming out of FBI files. It, it's not coming out of the IRS files because the IRS does not give you files. files. Yeah. The IRS is good luck getting anything they they have 
Freedom of Information Act forms that you can fill out. <laughs> but, but they're they not going to give they you just, anything. <laughs> they just disapprove them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've i never tried. Um, I Maybe you could get like a personnel file or something. But if it's anything related to anything about someone's taxes, they won't give it, it to you. Here. So... Uh, so trying to get the IRS's side of this story, like I, I don't have it. So unless it was in the newspaper or it made it into the FBI file, I don't have that side. Um, but yeah. And, and when you look at it from that perspective, maybe, maybe the level of sophistication they were doing this at was a lot more, but the FBI just kind of glosses over that where the IRS would understand more, right. Everything they were doing to cover up what they weren't doing that they should be doing to be legal, I guess. Right, because, yeah, from the FBI's perspective, like, what they want to do is is they want to nail them for something. Mm -hmm. And they know that one way to do that is to get him busted for these tax issues. But they have no enforcement of that. The FBI doesn't really care about you know the accounting like that's, right that's and not they their don't under, they don't understand it either so right. they can't really understand how sophisticated it is right so, probably... so to their extent it's like well how do we how do we catch him doing something shady and at that point they'd have to turn it over anyway mm -hmm. so like they're not like actively like show us your books like the I, the fbi doesn't care about that part right but but yeah it's it is weird but like I said, I got to give him some credit for the attorney thing. Like, at first, it sounds really dumb to show up. Like, when they when you're summoned to the IRS office and you show up and you have nothing, like, that seems really stupid. But it might not actually be that stupid because... They like, couldn't do it. They didn't know what to do right. when you brought nothing, so... Right. I mean, like, the IRS is a scary thing. You know, like as far as as far as law enforcement goes, IRS is one of the scarier ones, I think. But really, like they're the same as anyone else. Like they have to prove that you did something wrong, and if the books don't exist, <laughs> it's, then it's on them. They yeah. got they got to find the evidence. So um, it sounds really dumb, but like that's not the worst. Yeah, they, I, I suppose. The, I, the less you turn over to them, the harder they have to work. I mean, it almost makes it sound like the worse your books are, the better you're off. Because it's harder <laughs> to prove you did anything wrong, right? Yeah, yeah. So, interesting. I mean, I'm not encouraging people yeah, to... Yeah, don't, don't cook your books or, yeah. or not have books because of... Yeah, I mean, just do your taxes correctly. But but seriously, like, back in the, back in this time... Like, now, I, I, it's, I assume that there's a major difference between the IRS in the 60s and today. Like today, the IRS knows what you owe. Like before you file, they know exactly what you owe. Or they have a pretty good idea. Yeah. Like, I mean. Yeah. But like in the 60s, I have no idea like what they knew or didn't know. And, that, and these are all like restaurants and nightclubs. So it's like a largely cash business. Yes, yeah. So they're not getting the numbers. And you got to wonder like W-2s, did something like that even exist in the 60s? I, I don't know. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't. I you know I I would be I would bet the W twos existed but but how good were they about you know automatically sending them in each year yeah you know? like I don't know like they existed but they maybe only received sixty percent of them and just didn't really yeah. do anything about the other forty percent they never got yeah. and stuff like that I definitely I mean by no means do I know a whole lot about how taxes work but but yeah so this is is it dumb it's super dumb. But at the same time, like, it's going to work for a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, and that's the thing. Like, to us, to, uh, to me on the surface, it's like there's so much you, more you could do. But I can't really take it away from him because he dragged it out for 10, 20 years, yeah. this case, before he ever gotten in any trouble for it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and he almost majorly wins on a technicality. But I'm not even going to mention what that technicality is because that's going to be a whole thing in itself. So well, that's coming. That's coming. In that's the that's coming, and it's huge. <laughs> it's it's like the most major legal violation that the FBI, IRS were doing. Um, it's they should have gotten a lot more trouble. trouble. All right. So I guess we can wrap this episode up. Just know this is kind of the first part of a many part. Yeah. But but it's not we're not following this up right after right after. No. We're just going to come back and revisit it, it 
along the we'll timeline. We'll check in periodically. Mm-hmm.